Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here with Pat Blassey, who is owner of Altair Travel in Brentwood, Missouri. And we're here at the Ensemble Travel Conference, and we wanted to talk to Pat about her agency and how she started and how it's grown. And this is part of our series on great agents and great agencies. And this is Insider Travel Report. Now, Pat, uh, you've been an ensemble member for how long? It, well, back to Giants, and to be honest, I, I can't even tell you how far back we go. Yeah, that's I mean, we we've been around a long time, and Giants was terrific, and I love, actually, I love the tagline of the conference this week, on the shoulders of Giants Ensemble, I mean, or however they worded it. I think yeah. it's, I think it gives great credit and tribute to the people who started Giants, and um, how successful it's been. It just keeps going and getting bigger and better. Well, I know, and I've been covering Giants myself for, since the mid-90s, and it's become a, a really great organization, and it has grown itself. But let's talk a little bit about your agency. When did you start the agency, and, and why? Why did you want to get into the travel agency business? Well, honestly, I, I did not start it. Mm -hmm. I was not the originator of it. Um, I had worked for many years for a gentleman in St. Louis who was a real entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was sort of into so many things. He was into insurance, he was into banking, and uh, one day he decided, because he had a couple airplanes that were used for private charters, mm -hmm. that his pilots told him, well, you should be in the travel business. Mm -hmm. You know, just like that, easy, right? Okay. Go in the travel business which he did uh, with a friend of his, another entrepreneurial gentleman. And so with the pilots, in fact, that's where our name came from. Altair. Altair. It's as bright as star in a galaxy, and they wanted an A name, you know. That's okay. very well, good, good for the Yellow Pages back then. What, what, are, what were Yellow Pages? I don't know. That's exactly <laughs> right. So, um, so at the time, I had just quit working for him. I had been with him for like 15 years. Uh, my daughter was young. And so I decided to stay home. But mm -hmm. to be honest, I've worked my entire life since, you know, a young woman. And um, so I was home. I was home for a couple years and doing volunteer and doing things with my daughter. And then they opened this agency. And um, as usual with them, because they were so spread and so many different things, they had a, you know, they got everything they needed to do. They had a great uh, a manager. But one night at a party, um, I hate to bore you with all this, but no, one, not at all. One, at, one night at a party, um, his wife was there and another woman who actually, oh, and I, I've missed a step here. When they opened the agency, they had asked if my husband and I wanted to put in some money. Mm -hmm. So we did, a very small amount of money. And um, so then fast forward, maybe a year and a half, the agency was open. And one night at a party, um, this gentleman who was the greatest, I mean, if I could just do, have his sales skills, I mean, he was so terrific. He got his wife and he got this other woman and he got me together and he, oh, you, you know, you girls would be so good at this, tra at Altair. Mm -hmm. We need you there. We need you to get involved. So we're going to make you a deal. And that's how it started. So he made us a deal uh, to, in exchange for the stock, we took over some obligations they had. Mm -hmm. And so we became the three owners of Altair. And what, what year was that? Okay. That was in 81. 81. It actually opened in 79. Wow. And so that, so all of a sudden you found yourself uh, right. a, a owner of a travel agency in part. Absolutely. And I, to be honest, I knew nothing about travel agencies. Mm -hmm. um, I had been in sales with him. I had been in service. And that was really my, uh, what I felt was my strength. Mm -hmm. uh, I had worked in insurance and it was always about touching the client touching, staying in touch. And, but I knew nothing about the business end mm. of a travel agency. So we, thank God we had a good manager and that's how we got started. I mean, I'm going back to 
I mean, we had a big celebration when we got our first ticket printer. I mean, we used to handwrite tickets. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. OEGs and calling the airlines, and it was crazy. So you did book a lot of airline tickets back then, right? Oh, that was the big thing, yes, yeah. yes. And in fact, I would say it was probably at the, in the beginning more airline tickets than vacations or leisure travel. Yeah. Um, that was just really the kickoff of the corporate travel world mm -hmm. and um, so that's what we did we delivered tickets and you know of course then the airlines were paying commissions so mm -hmm. um, didn't have to worry about fees at that point but I remember that um, that arc report you know I mean oh yeah uh, you know I mean all those things were just such challenges to me and and to us but we we plugged away and mm -hmm. plugged away and eventually um, the one, his wife eventually got out of the business, maybe like four years later, three years later. And then the uh, other partner, she most recently, uh, maybe like three years ago, uh, about four years ago. And so now it's just me. Just you. And, just me. And, and talk about what is the agency today? How many agents do you have? How many independent contractors? And, and kind of what roughly what's your sales volume these days? Um, I would say this year will probably be... A, maybe 26, 27 million mm -hmm. in sales and, and gross sales. Um, of that, uh, going back a few years, it was heavier in corporate, mm -hmm. but now we're really moving to the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I would say three quarters are leisure and the rest is corporate. So you, you transitioned, yes, you know, we like with men. transitioned Min very, well, it took time. Now, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking over a span of almost 40 years. So, you know, in my mind, it seems like yesterday. Mm -hmm. But when I look back on how many actual years it's been, and actually at the conference now, you know, when they were showing these, going you know back and these some of these, well, these the old photos. movies and photos yeah oh what memories it brings i know now how many how many agents do you have on staff uh well i have um employees i have you know we have 20. Right. not all agents some are you know right. we got to have our our support staff and full-time accounting department um, receptionists but we have probably there's 12 agents mm -hmm. and the rest um no, maybe more than that, 15 maybe. And so there's 20 employees, and then we have like 30 independent contractors. So you've gone that independent contractor route we as well. have, and you know what, Jim? I did it, we did it so early, and I think that's sometimes the benefit of not knowing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, because I remember early in our, in our office that we had an opportunity to have some people that wanted to learn the business, who had good contacts, who, and so, I thought, well, why not? You know, no cost to us. Let's let's all get in this together. Well, I do remember that in St. Louis at the time, that I was sort of, kind of looked at like a, you know, the black sheep. Like, what are you doing, outside salespeople? Like, they don't, you know. We and, don't, and now we, over half of agents are all outside or at home. Base, the right? pendulum's gone completely the other way. Right. But I view those people. And, I, and many of which have been with me. There's actually two women that have been with me from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't view them. I, I actually hate the term outside because they're not outside. Right. They're inside. They're part of us. Right. We're really a family. Mm -hmm. And that's the focus we have and that I've had since the beginning. I guess because I worked just as um, just a worker bee mm -hmm. for so many years, I know the value of being made to feel a part of something. Yeah. And uh, so it's always been important to me to keep people involved, to let them know there's no, you know, I mean, certainly we have some behind door meetings, you have to talk about some things, but we're very open, mm -hmm. uh, both with our staff and uh, the outside quote unquote agents. Uh, we have regular meetings, we have trainings. Um, we're very, very fortunate that, uh, in fact, I tease everyone that they're all pretty spoiled because we're so fortunate our vendors come to us 
and we have lunch trainings and they come in and bring lunch. But it's critical to our success. And as I explained to um, the vendors when they come in and, and how we operate, we do these, uh, they're usually scheduled on Wednesday. I can't think of, there's not too many Wednesdays that we don't have um, a training. And I predict to the vendors that you come in and you do a good training, and I promise you, you're going to see your numbers move. Yeah. And they do. Yeah. And so, that, so that's really one of the keys to your success. You talk, talk a little bit about some of the other keys as over the years, what, what you really thought were some of the, the things that you did that really worked and, and made your agency what it is well, today. Um, I do believe, and of course I'm not you know, privy to what's going on in other agencies and what they're spending on this or spending on that. I've been big in marketing. I, I'm not afraid to spend money. Uh, going back, actually the first time I started print advertising mm -hmm. was right after 9-11. Wow, so was, you didn't wait. <laughs> it was, well, I mean, there was, it was dead. Yeah. It was quiet. There was nothing happening. And so I thought, gosh, we got to let people know we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, that we didn't go away. Well, you know, people say you know, when things times are tough is when you start yeah, marketing, this right? This wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. And so I started just a little, I think it was like a little three by five column. And we called it the Altair Advantage. Mm -hmm. And it was a little snapshot of me. And it was just a chatty, um, really a chatty column uh, about what's going on in the industry, uh, new ships, new trends, mm -hmm. sales, you know, some good deals. And that really took off. And what it did also for us is it really, I'm big in relationships, mm -hmm. whether it's a relationship with um, certainly my staff or my vendors. Um, I believe in uh, establishing a, a good trust mm -hmm. between like with our local newspaper so yeah. that relationship started then and through the years I mean we're still big with them we advertise every Sunday in the travel section which I know many, many agencies, they've gotten away from print. Well, also, there have been the fewer travel sections in newspapers these well, days. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, but then the, the other thing I started um, probably now about nine years ago mm -hmm. is a, uh, just a little vignette on a radio show. Mm -hmm. And uh, the host is a, has a show from 6 in the morning till 10. And it's the, the signal of the show goes throughout St. Louis, this, our suburban area, actually even further and over into Illinois. So it has a good, um, you know, we, we hit a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the key to that has been, honestly, I give him so much credit. I have a great host who has, has immediately sort of understood what it takes to sell travel. Okay. And um, what he has done for our company, uh, he's kind of made me kind of a known um, entity, you mm -hmm. know, in the radio business in St. Louis. And even though our, our time is only once a week, and um, I think I'm paying fairly, fairly only like 10 minutes, right. but he's so great, you know. I mean, we talk about everything. It isn't always travel. But he gives me 15, 20 minutes to the point that it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. The people that come in our office and I, 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 you know, our uh, staff are trained to really, you know, how did you come? How did you know us? Have you done business with us before? And it's like, oh, we hear Pat on the radio. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, yeah. You're we, famous on the we, radio. Uh, seriously, to the point, and I laugh at this. I have been out shopping, and I've had someone come up to me and say, "Excuse me, um, are you on the radio?" They hear. <laughs> are you on the radio? They they, they, they hear see my you. voice. Right. No, they hear my voice. Right. I'll be talking to someone. Mm -hmm. So that has, uh, and then from that we started doing come-alongs mm -hmm. with him, the host, and so now we've been doing that for like nine years, and we've been averaging from well for an Alaska cruise we had like eighty something, but. Um, we've been averaging like 40 or 50 people a year. Mm -hmm. And it's promoted as, 
you know, travel with old friends, travel with new friends, because right. you're definitely going to make new friends traveling with St. Louis people. And it's a hoot. It's, yeah. it's so fun, and I go with them. Um, and then from that, we've branched off into other come-alongs. We do, um, like this year, we've got the World Bird Sanctuary in St. Louis mm -hmm. going to Alaska. Uh, one of our things we're most proud of, we've been doing for 17 years, uh, the cruise for the St. Louis Baseball Cardinals. And oh, so you got baseball fans and everything else oh, going there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Baseball fans. I mean, you know, Cardinal, I don't know if you know much about St. Louis baseball, but I mean, they come on. I mean, they have Cardinal earrings and Cardinal scarves. And I mean, everything is, it's all about the Cardinals, right. who we love. And do you take them on cruises or where do you go? Oh, yeah. yeah we do cruises yeah. and it's every year. And it's only, it, it has to be the same week every year. Mm -hmm. It's like the third week in January because we have to, it has to be after a big event that they do in January and right before they go to spring training. Absolutely. You can't be, you can't interfere oh, with the baseball oh, thing. Oh, you can't interfere, you know, with the pitchers. And, and then from that, um, actually, we were doing this even before the cruise, we were doing spring training trips mm -hmm. for the Cardinals. <clears throat> and so... You know, it's just, it's... So you think all these, these things have sort of come together and you kind of fell into things and you've made some great decisions on yeah, marketing, but... Absolutely. You know, um, in some ways I like to feel that I fell into it, but in other ways, you know, I, I, I have to say for any new agency or someone getting started, you know, don't think that it's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to pay attention sure. and you have to... It's hard work. Uh, you know You know the industry. You probably know it better than I know. You know our yields. You know what we work off of. And so you have to pay attention to the business side. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pay attention, if, it, if it's all about travel to you, right. which I, and the technical side, you know, travel's not the easiest. And in, in today's world, it's, it's very involved. But if you don't understand and have good people handling your money and your reports and sure. and then if you don't really understand your cost and controlling that you're going to be off on a trip but you're going to come back and not have an agency That's, yeah i know that can and be a that problem happen and you know that oh yes yeah, so and we know so the, the the bad stories all around I, I guess my last question is where do you where do you see the business going both for you and overall uh you know i mean for years we predicted the demise people have been predicting the demise of travel agents didn't happen. I think they're stronger now than they ever have been, to be honest with you. But where, where do you see, A, your business going, and where do you see the overall travel agency business going? Well, I'm with you 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll share with you something we did just starting last fall. Uh, we are in a, an office building, but it's not a huge office building, and it has good street visibility. We're in a great, great busy area. Uh, but the, w next door to us was a law firm. Mm -hmm. And one day I was coming into our office, and we have the front of the building, but I was coming in the back, and I noticed this law firm was going away. They were packing boxes, and it was, you know, I mean, sort of, it was kind of a cut-up space. And But I thought, what are they doing? Well, I got the harebrained idea um, that, and, and to be honest, it had been something I'd been thinking of that, I feel the consumer needs more, I think they need more training. Mm. They need more knowledge. And I think if we want them, um, well, first of all, I don't think they need any help from us in not working on the internet like they started out doing. I think there's been enough incidents and, and um, experience, bad experiences. We use the internet at the office. Everyone uses mm. the internet, we love it. But we were seeing this trend of people coming back to the agency, of, of new people. I mean, we have our, our strong base. And, um, you know, it was comments like, well, we really didn't know. And, and then we go on the Internet, and, and we get to get more confused. Yeah. So the space opened up, and we were getting a little tight anyway. So I, I took the step and actually... Uh, when I introduced the concept to, is we kind of do things as a team, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I 
certainly, you know, everything stops with me, but or starts with me. I don't know which is which, starting <laughs> or stopping. But I like I I like everyone's input. So when I told them all what, hey, let's go, and my idea was to take this space that was 1,200, 1,300 square feet and make it one big open area mm -hmm. to move our vendor training and our staff training because we have two conference rooms, but they were getting really, really tight, you know. People were having to stand, and uh, so I said, we'll move all that there but let's do, let's invite our clients. We have the vehicles to get out the message. We have the newspaper, we have the radio, to invite people to come in for, like, you know, we just did um, Ireland and, and Scotland mm -hmm. with Brendan Vacations mm -hmm. uh, a week ago, and we called it uh, Ireland Scotland 101, and we had 50 people. 50 Does consumers it? off the end, or, or, or existing clients, I assume. Yes, yeah. well, some clients, but new, many new people mm. to our company. And, um, but we don't just, you know, they just, we just don't line up chairs for them. I mean, we've made this room, actually, we've, we call it the living room. Mm -hmm. And one corner of it is sofas and, an, oh, and, and a nice setup of chairs, very comfortable, very attractive, a new kind of new look, you know, kind of glass and white and black and a big mural of the world on the mm -hmm. wall. And um, so we've done River Cruise 101, we've done Alaska 101, and it is, it's amazing. It's just wonderful. So you're educating your, your customers, your clients right. about all these wonderful opportunities. About the opportunities, but we're also educating them to us. Mm -hmm. So they're coming in and seeing our office, which is really very lovely. They can see that we're just, you know, that we've been around. So they know that we're solid. They know we're responsible. Um, and because we've been around, you know, people, well, there's a trust there. And, mm -hmm. and that's my biggest, um, I, 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 someone said, and in fact, one of the sessions this week at, uh, conference, there was the word integrity that came mm -hmm. up, and um, that's that's kind of sort of my buzzword. Right. And my staff knows it. We stand behind. If there's a problem with a client, you know, we're going to do our we're, we're going to stand on our head to make sure that they're always made whole. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about service. That's it. And that's what our world needs today is service. That's what's lacking. That's absolutely, I would agree with it. Oh my God, it's it's definitely lacking. And I think your, sounds like your agency provides that all around. Uh, Pat, it's been great to talk to you Thank about you. your agency. Thank you. Uh, so it's much. an amazing story and it seems to be continuing now into new ways and just, just the fact that you take the, the bet to expand your office shows you where this industry is today. It's, it's in the right direction and it's not stopping, that's for sure. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.